and we're live. So we'll go live here now. Welcome to the McCaffrey Crafts live stream. I am Francis McCaffrey, and every Friday I make myself available to you guys, the community, to uh, to do a live stream. And uh, yeah, let me see now. I think we're online on Facebook. We're online on YouTube, and I'm also on Instagram Live. I'm not live on TikTok because it's too many comments I can't keep up with. So if you're joining this live stream for the first time, uh, welcome. I'm Francis McCaffrey. I'm here in my dungeon, my little stick layer. Uh, so I thought I'd give you guys little visuals of, you know, the, the things behind me. I'm always dusty, but never rusty. So there we go. Um, let's see now who we have joining. So uh, usually it takes a few minutes for uh, for a few people to uh, to join. And uh, I answer any questions you have, uh, questions about stick making, if you're interested in Irish crafts, Irish heritage, um, anything at all you guys want to talk about. I would be nothing without you guys in my community. And I want to thank everyone in my community. I have 10,000 people uh, watching me over on uh, YouTube. I have 28,000 people who follow me on uh, Facebook. I have 20, uh, was it 21,000 on TikTok and on Instagram now, I think I'm up to about 23,000 people as well. So thank you so much. And it means a lot that you're following Irish Crafts. And um, again, the purpose of this uh, channel and this live stream is uh, I really want to bring to the world the idea that stick making is a real job. Uh, you can make a living out of it. And um, also to promote Irish Crafts and Heritage that um, stick making was very much rooted in Irish history as, you know, as a profession. It was something that, you know, at, at one time of, you know, it was something that uh, the people did use to uh, to survive off of. And uh, this is my journey. You guys, some of you guys have been watching me since uh, the early uh, 2000s or something. So I, I started stick making back in 2027. And uh, I kind of got into stick making after the financial crisis in 2008. My dad was a stick maker and uh, a carpenter by trade. And he did a few sticks as well. Grand uncle was involved with stick making. Our family had always been associated with crafting. Um, I come from a long line of entrepreneurs. So the McCaffreys were always people who set up their own businesses and different things like that. So um, I was always quite happy to uh, to get involved in business. And you know, it takes a while for a man to find his path. And um, so my story was that in after the financial crisis in 2008, um, think times were tough. There wasn't much jobs. Um, having a business degree was a piece of toilet paper. It wasn't worth nothing. And, uh, you know, I had to to find ways to uh, to make money. And I think that, you know, a lot of people, they're always giving criticism to how the world is, how hard it is and, and all of these different things. But you know, you can't, <clears throat> what do they say? You, you, you can't make a diamond without having a bit of pressure. And I do like that analogy because I think that as times get tougher, the, you know, the people do rise to the top. It, it filters out all the people because, um, I, who are lazy. Um, I'm very, uh, I'm very vocal about, uh, about people who, um, you know, they just have the wrong attitude in life at the moment. And I, I don't blame them. You know, they they mightn't have the right leadership or the right people around them or something like that. They're easily influenced by what they see on social media. They're constantly distracted by by news events and by, you know, their, their TikTok brain and different things like that. So there's a few comments coming in now. So on Instagram, uh, we have Great Dane says, I want to live the lifestyle um, that uh, surrounds your sticks. The life... Yeah, the life, the lifestyle around the sticks is uh, is pretty good. Um, but you see, what I, I I like to do is um, I kind of reinvest all the money I get from stick making. Like I, I usually keep my account pretty empty. I don't store money the same I store sticks. So um, for me, I love traveling. The lifestyle around me is that uh, I save my money, I work my ass off, and I work really hard, and then I go on nice nice uh, vacations and uh, with the family always. I like to create um experiences for the uh, the kids while they're still around. And uh, I, that's that's what's what I'm important to. As many of you guys know, I do you know mind my three great kids on my own, uh, which is uh, which is never never too easy. And uh, so my lifestyle is usually around being uh, being being the uh, the kids in the family. I'm very much a lone wolf type of guy. I work uh, by myself. My dad uh, does come and help me as well. And uh, you know I'll, I'll start to maybe give you guys a bit more about my life maybe about my philosophy and my mindset set as well of um, of how I got involved in stick making. Um, you know, I've been doing the stick 
the stick game for quite a long time. And maybe a lot of you guys don't know who I am or you're, you're seeing me for the first time. But uh, I've been doing this since 2007. 2012 started getting over. 2015, I was I was flying and then, you know, just just kept growing from year to year to year. And there's a lot more in in this game than than just simply making a nice stick. And, you know, if you have enough time and enough patience, anyone can make a nice stick. But you know, if you're watching my channel and I hope you're you're enjoying the, the, my journey and uh, my journey in life, uh, you know, I've talked about, you know, illnesses and injuries that I've got through and, and different times. And I think that everyone who, you know, a lot of people who buy walking sticks and um, they have injuries, they're dealing with stuff as well. It's kind of normal, like, you know, a lot of guys do that. Um, I'll get to the other comments in a minute. I'm just waiting to build up a bit. So we have Vincent444 on Instagram says, hi, Francis. I'm really enjoying your journey. Very good. Look, I do I do different bits of marketing, like sometimes I'll post a picture of a girl holding my stick, which causes a little bit of fuss, but that's intentional. Um, sometimes I'm showing you guys the making of the stick. Sometimes I'm doing some memes and stuff like that. Uh, I just, you know, it, it's giving you kind of like my work philosophy. I, I work more in volume and like a whirlwind. Um, you know, some people, they're very organized, like my workshop is not organized, it's a mess. But like um, how I approach business is just being very active and taking action. And I, I think very fast and I like to, uh, to to get things done. So like I, I'm making 10 sticks at once. I'm painting 10, 10 sticks at once. I'm doing 10, 20 things at once. And uh, I don't go to bed at night unless I've done something. Uh, I can't if I can't take a day off because I, I, I wouldn't be able to sleep and different things like that. So it's it's an interesting journey. Um, these live streams is where you get the chance to actually ask me about my journey and ask me um, various questions and different things. And I'm fine to answer them as well. I know it's a bit of banter. I tease a few of you guys in the community, but like, you know, that's an Irish thing. Uh, now we said, uh, let's see, at East 777 uh, Owen, isn't it? Um, hope you're well, Francis. Thanks for the laugh, uh, Anthony, as well. Well, no no problem, Anthony. Um, I'm quite happy to uh, to have a bit of laughs and banter. Um, I think it's life too serious. Like, uh, all my, I have ops which is short for opposition, which is short for people against you. It's it's kind of a term they use, I suppose, in, in rap circles, your ops, your opposition. And, uh, you know, the way that I deal with ops is um, I use them for for promoting my business. Um, it's a very intentional thing that I do. Uh, I know how to say things and word things a certain way that will annoy um, some people that, uh, you know, they, they're, they're not happy with me, you know, portraying my my journey in stick making and especially in Irish stick making uh, a lot of people they want to claim Irish heritage um, and they have no connection to Ireland they understand that people buy sticks that have grown out of Irish soil made by Irish hands so they'll grow them in different countries and say it's an Irish stick it's an Irish stick and then I'm quite I, I know all I have to say is hey guys don't buy a stick unless it comes from Ireland and then there's 20 guys who get annoyed that start posting non-stop about me online and uh what they don't understand is the more they post about me, the more people that they're posting to get curious about who is this guy and stuff, and they come to see me. Um, so it's a very kind of intentional thing that uh, that I do sometimes with uh, with you can you see a lot of a lot of people who go online they're terrified to um, embrace you know these guys that come at you and say mean things and stuff. But like it's like you know if you go up to a girl for the first time and go hey do you want to go out or what's your name she's gonna tell you get lost loser who are you you know you, you have to get used to that and you have to build up your status you know before people trust you um he says any used hiking sticks going up um i have this one <clears throat> this one it's not huge like it's about 50 <clears throat> you can see this this is like um a 52 inch stick um it's a bit curvy and stuff but it has a nice way so you can see it's, it is pretty straight um it's very the, the thing about hiking sticks is hard to model them you know but I made one with a bit of a knob on top. You guys kept asking for it. I was like, no, no, I will not put a knob on the top of me sticks, me hiking sticks. But, uh, you know, eventually I just do a few anyway. It's just in my mind. But no, it, I just came across this piece of wood. Um, it's a very nice hiking stick. It's it's not huge. It's not a huge hiking stick, 52 inches. Um, there's a reason why I don't do very huge hiking sticks. It's because you can't ship them. You can't post them. It's a pain in the butt to deal with shipping companies. Uh, so now let me cast. Okay, so I have those. That's my Instagram messages. So let me go now to just some catch up my Facebook messages. <coughs> Rodney Cox says hello. Uh, Tasmanian Outdoors said good day, Francis from uh, Paul in Hobart, Tasmania. 
Shout out to all my uh, Tasmanian bros. Fun fact, um, I had a debate about black torn. Irish black torn was a Tasmanian guy before. There was this dude making Irish black torn out of Tasmania. And I was like, what are you talking about? You're in Tasmania and stuff. And he goes, no, no, it's Irish. But there is apparently black torn that grows in Tasmania. But it's really weird. Like um, I looked at it before and the guy sent me some. And it's classified as Prunus spinona, like by the you know the bath what you call the the people who do the uh the plants and fauna out there but uh yeah it's a bit lighter but uh yeah they actually have a strand of it out there as well which is quite unusual and mary says hello i uh, really enjoy the videos with molly yes <coughs> you guys over on instagram um if you go to my youtube channel um i made a short series um with this lady called molly where she talks about you know about nature and uh and goes for walks and talks about all the folklore stuff um when i was kind of injured i kind of like got a bunch of videos made so in you know just in case i was out of action or i couldn't talk for a while um will forrester says um hello francis loving the videos do you have any advice about straightening a season stick yes yes i posted some videos um you have to heat up the uh the wood um a lot and uh you usually have to use something like a vice to straighten it as well uh i have um if you look at my short videos um i have Actually, I'll be I'll post some of the straightening videos again. But if you go, Will, to my shorts, you, you're on YouTube, I see it. Yeah. So go to YouTube shorts and flick through and you'll you'll see if you scroll down. I, I have a few videos showing how I straighten a season stick of wood. And I have a few videos on that. If you can't find them, just just message me afterwards and just give me an hour or two and I'll, I'll reply to you as well. Um, let's see. IE777 says, where is your favorite holiday spot? Um, I'm lucky that I've traveled a lot. Uh, uh, I did enjoy South Africa. I had fun there. Kenya was fun. Uh, I like Japan, Kyoto and uh, Osaka. But like, see, the thing about holidays is who you're with and who you're meeting over there and stuff like that. Uh, Thailand. Um, I still I still like Thailand, even though it is a place that is overcrowded with tourism now. Um, I do like going off the beaten track and getting a bit lost. And uh, I don't mind Thailand as well. I just like that it's, uh, you know, it's not too bad to drive around there as well. Uh, so yeah, there is a few places that that I, I like. So um, Norway, Norway is pretty cool, and I like Germany. Uh, Berlin is a fun town, crazy nightlife, and uh, I promised I promised uh, my daughter I'd bring her to some place in uh, some there for, uh, for a crazy nightclub that I don't want to go to. It's an embarrassing nightclub to go to. Um, you have to you have to dress up to do it, and she's doing it intentionally, but she wants to, to for her 18th to bring me to some weird nightclub where you have to dress up in black leather or some weird stuff like that but uh you know we'll see about that um that's not really my thing <laughs> i'm more of dust and sticks but uh yeah i do i do enjoy um travel i think it's kind of good i i like to go and see what people are doing and crafting and and, and different things like that as well um ray mcknight says i'm really so he's on facebook he sent the message uh, ray it says i really am liking the root stick i can't wait to see it finished okay so <clears throat> Here's here is the root stick that I'm working on. Um, it's not finished yet. Um, if you remember, here's a little close up of the root stick. Um, a few days ago, I posted a video called Journey of the Stick, and it's little short clips. And the short clips are the making of this. And if you remember the very first video, how it looked, like it looks unrecognizable now. Like I, I still have to straighten it. Like I still have to work on the shaft. Still get a few of these little straightening things out as well. But I'll show you where I'm at because uh, this this guy was asking about a Ray McKnight. So um, this is where I'm at with this stick. Um, I put on um, a bit of sanding sealer and I have sanded it down. And you can see, look, because here's what I was starting with. See the coloring? Like you can, it's very kind of, you know, gray color and browny color. It loses a lot of the color. But if you if you sand it down and finish it quite well, you can bring it up and like that's looking amazing now compared to what it started with this is going to be a lovely stick i'm really happy with the way that this stick has turned out and um, this is a real root stick i showed you it from the beginning when it was a root with all the bits bits of roots sticking in all different directions it looked you know it looked crazy going all different directions and i rough cut it and i rasped it and i sanded it and now i've sealed it and uh yeah it's looking it's looking really really good so this stick um, I'll probably need a few more days to finish on it. I will be posting little clips of me working on this stick. So if you are interested in the journey of a walking stick, I'll be doing more of these type of videos now that I'm back to 
my health is back and that I can do a bit more physical work again. So anyway, that's that's to answer your question there, Ray, as well. And uh, let me just check now. See, make sure I'm on top of all the messages. OK, the next message comes from YouTube um, for uh, calamari and kayak rentals. I can't pronounce the first word. Shoot loose. Um, he says, my stick arrived in California on Monday. Any advice on how to trim it or customize the lent? Uh, yeah, if you want to customize the lent, um, just take a handsaw and mark out where you want to cut it. Um, cut with the, uh, the handsaw, then get some sandpaper and just sand it as well, just to make it a little bit smooth around at the bottom. Then just put some sealer, can be paint, can anything, just to kind of like water seal it as well at the bottom. And uh, yeah, there you have it. And you put on the, the rubber fur, which is a bit stretchy, and uh, away you go. It looks pretty good. Um, Jeff Hubert says, I'm possibly looking for an additional cane for my mother. Um, have you made many? Jeff, go to McCaffreyCrafts.com. www mccaffreycrafts.com i have hundreds and hundreds of walking sticks on my website i individually picture and price every stick on my website so when you go to my website you look and you'll see hundreds and hundreds of sticks there's plenty of sticks i can cut them to size your mom will will have no problem as well if you don't know which stick to buy or you need some help uh, just message me um I'll, I'll be kind of busy for an hour or two after this need to eat some food sort sort out the the, the young ones and uh, but uh, yeah, send me a message and uh, and that. Um, let's see. <laughs> AE seven seven seven. Any chance of setting me up with one of your models? Uh, I think they have. I have have fellas. I think they have fellas. Like you know, they're they're you know. I I did use some some models. Uh, three models to promote my walking sticks. I have I have seventy two photos and something like fifty short videos. But like uh, any time I post one, it causes a bit of banter. But. Uh, from what I know, I think they are all in committed relationships. There are, I think they're about 22, 23 years old. Um, they're studying, uh, one's doing studying business administration. Um, they actually were actually working professional models. I, I, I knew them a little bit earlier than, than, uh, than before they were getting a little bit famous, but one or two of them are getting a lot of work now I can see. And, uh, you know, if uh, they're, they're on Instagram and places like, um, you'll see their Instagram, they're in like in Dubai one week, they're in France another week. That, uh, you know, one of them has, has become quite, quite successful as well. And uh, they're actually quite intelligent. Like, as you know, it's, I know you're, you're joking there to say me set you up with, with the models, but they're very, you know, I think I got lucky with these, like, cause I, I've reached out, I actually reached out to a lot of models to say, Hey, do you want to model my sticks and stuff? And a lot of them were just like, get lost loser, go away creep. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm literally not a scammer and stuff like that. Um, and then if you go to the modeling agencies, like you have the agency fees and stuff. So it's always best if you can find models to, um, deal with direct. And, uh, you know, if you find ones that are business minded, they're professional, they get things done on time. But, uh, but I, I don't know, like when, when I kind of mentioned it before, um, some of you guys in the stick community were being a bit weird and messaging them and, you know, <laughs> being, uh, being a little bit uh, inappropriate to them. But, uh, remember, look, they're humans. They're, they're nice girls. You know, they're, they're just, you know, they're young, they're young, you know, in their, well, not young, you know what I mean? They're twenties, like 22, I think one and 23, I think one is like a bit older, but, um, yeah, they're just, you know, they're just trying to, to find their way in life. And, uh, you know, they're, they are like working, like, you know, trying to, to get modeling jobs, uh, music video jobs and, and different things like that, as well as I like, finished their education. So like, uh, you know, don't harass them. Like, you know, they, and here's the thing is they look at the comments on the video. So like, if you guys post some mean comments or, or get like super pervy and stuff, like they actually do get a bit, bit, uh, a bit kind of flustered and stuff. So just remember, like there are, you know, humans and emotions behind those, those models as well. So that just, you know, they're there, have a bit of a laugh, you know, in terms of like, yeah, that's it. But uh, don't be messaging them and being all creepy lads. <laughs> you know, they don't want that at all. Like, uh, But yeah, that answers your question as well. Um, let's see now. Glass Master Fresh 420. Okay, you're a bit of a smoker. I'm a big fan. I love your Irish hot on sticks. I do black torn, not hot on. Um, uh, and you do beautiful work. Uh, thank you as well. As well. But uh, yeah, hot on is more of a common very cheap wood that's very easily available that a lot of people sometimes paint and cause black torn. I use the daddy of woods. This is actually black torn and um, the bark of the black torn. Like sometimes if I'm showing you this piece on a video, you're like, that's not black torn. Look at it. Look at the bark. But like when you sand it back, you can see it's black torn. You see the color of it, that purplish thing as well. You know, I'm, I'm the top guy that makes walking sticks in Ireland 
and blacktron sticks. If I tell you this piece of wood is a blacktron, it's blacktron. You know, I don't need all the wood nerds online looking at a picture from this angle and say, that doesn't look like blacktron, that's a hawthorn stick. I've been working with sticks for 20 years, I know, blah, blah, blah. Then I go, jing, there it is, it's a blacktron. You know, but uh, you deal with that all the time. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, Jeff Huber's okay. And uh, let's see, more redheads holding sticks as well, yes. I should do that as well. Uh, but you see, I don't, want to, I don't want to lean too much into like cheesy stereotypes and stuff. Like, the, with, but with the image that I want to portray with sticks, I want to create badass sticks. You know, sticks that are cool, sticks are good. I kind of want to stay away from, I never liked that kind of marketing, you know, the leprechaun, the shamrocks, like, you know, I diddly, I diddly, I. I'll throw an I diddly, I song up every now and again, but like, I don't know, man. I want to do and portray the sticks the way I want them. And, uh, I'm happier doing that. I don't feel like I'm selling out and stuff. I don't, I'm not a big fan of all the, um, all the kind of like, you know, leprechauns and shamrocks and put little shamrocks and little notes and things. My style is quite simple. It's rustic, authentic walking sticks made in Ireland, made by Irish hands, grown out of Irish soil. It's the most authentic stick you can get in the market. There are no, there's no one else doing what I do within stick making in Ireland. Um, like 99.9% .9 of sticks. There's one or two my dad has put a handle on, but I use one piece of wood. I don't attach handles. Um, I'm not getting a piece of hawthorn, getting a piece of elm, sticking them together, calling it a fancy name, and uh, you know, suggesting strongly that it's a black thorn, which it isn't. Uh, my style is very rustic. It's very simple. Um, it's not like a fancy gentleman's cane. I'm not. I'm. I'm not that type of stick maker. Um, it's very kind of rustic and it has that kind of like retro feel to it. Like you know, when you have one of my sticks, like you know, sometimes I leave a few grass uh, rasp marks in it as well. Sometimes I leave like little kind of features as well. It's handmade. You know, all of that is done intentional to to create this atmosphere that when you're holding a stick, you can get the idea that you're having something that is classical, something that's you know like the working man stick and stuff like that. So that's kind of what I, what I like to do. And um, let's see, glass matter fresh says, I'm a virus descent myself. I understand your frustrations with the stereotype. Yeah, and like <clears throat> so many, so many guys lean into the stereotypes and and uh, I just never really, uh, re never really enjoy them at all. Um, and he says, uh, I personally like it when the knot at the end gives it more of a shillelagh feel. Yeah, like it just has that really kind of nice, like, uh, you know, you, like there's several ways you could do it. Like I could have tinned it out here and stuff, but you just look at it and you just get a feel for it. It's like, an, you know, any artist with a canvas, you just look at it and you just go for it. Um, <clears throat> but like when I post a picture, what I start with, with you guys in the stick community will look at the picture and say, ah, you should do this handle, you should do this handle. And everyone's a bit different and there's no right way to decide in the handle. Like when I saw this stick, this is the handle that I got in my vision. So. <clears throat> you look at a piece of wood, you get your little vision of what you want to do and you just go for it and you commit to it and that's it in stick making. <coughs> it's just a bit of dust, guys, a coffin. Um, they're beautiful uh, young ladies. Yes, they are, Mary. Yeah, they're fine. They're they're um they're they're actually cool. Like I you could just hang out with them and stuff. They're um they're living their lives like, you know, they you know, I think they're they're dating some guys that have a bit of money. You know, it's always always the young, beautiful girls, they have like, you know, a lot of male suitors. And uh, man, you know, they have they have a nice life. They're eating out in fancy restaurants most nights and stuff like that. So it's, you know, that's that's the life of a model. Um, but yeah, you see, I actually these are professional models like they're not just, you know, people that that I done that I done. And I just want easy, quick, easy videos. The, the modeling shoot is very quick. We try to get as many videos as possible in a short period of time. And uh, it works for me. Like there's no fancy editing in my channel at all. It's just quick. Get your phone, shoot and go. And uh you guys in the community seem to be okay with that as well. Um, let's see now. Uh, if a stick is big and thick, does it make it more expensive than the smaller, similar ones? Usually, yeah. Um, the bigger, heavier ones, they are a piece of wood that takes longer. Like a lighter piece of wood might be a few years, you know, 10, 15 years. The thicker pieces might be 25 years, 20, 25 to 30 years of growing. So <clears throat> if a stick is bigger and thicker, it means it's had a longer amount of time to grow. So yeah, I usually put a higher price on uh, on them than the smaller ones. Uh, Will says, um, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Hazel's nice, but Blackthorn is the cream in the coffee. That is true. Um, 
hazel is amazing wood and you love your sticks and, and it's great but you just blackthorn is the daddy of it like you know you just get li any little piece of blackthorn just feels a bit different and uh you know but if you are a stick collector get some hazel as well hazel's a nice wood which i sell go to mccaffreycrafts.com and check out the hazel section which is quite good <clears throat> okay rodney cox um do you need a person's height when making a stick for them uh usually it's half your height with shoes on but what I do is I make the sticks maybe 38, 39 inches. So if someone is shorter or wants it to cut. So I try to make as long as I can. And then if someone wants it shorter, I can just cut. So that gives me more more options for stock. <clears throat> Doink over on YouTube says, I finally caught a stream. Happy Friday. Doink. Happy uh, happy to you as well. Uh, is that Doink? I see you have a donkey profile picture as well. So I presume there's some story behind that if you want to share it with us. If it's, if it's friendly enough. Uh, Ray McKnight says, I hope I'm paying attention uh, when that stick uh, hits the sale page. I want that. Yes. Um, whenever I make whenever I make a video of it, they're, they're, um, they, are, they are highly sought after as well. <clears throat> but I, I'll be doing it often enough. So look, if you miss out on this one, Ray, the next week I'll have another one. The next week and sooner or later, it'll be the right place at the right time for the stick. But uh, I like this one. I have a lot of root sticks. Um, this one's nice. The root sticks are harder to get. They're way more energy to get out as well the way more dangerous to get so um the root sticks are always going to be um more more highly prized as well and um, there's not enough root, root sticks out there for the demand the demand for root sticks are way higher than you know the amount of sticks that are out there let's see uh my scottish bro says good evening francis good evening there we go uh forge lafemme says hello everyone uh look at all those sticks back there yes there's a few as well um I've reached out to this uh, guy on Instagram who is uh, quite a huge long uh, stick community and uh, he has uh, some famous people in his stick community like the the singer Moby or the DJ Moby or whatever you want to call him and a number of other people are all part of his community so um, I'll, I've, I have I've reached out to them and uh, they said they'll do an interview so maybe in the next week um, I'll interview the guys and uh, I'll put it up on my uh, my socials and you guys can see it as well and uh, yeah they have an interesting take of uh, of their their stick their stick community is a bit different and uh, quite quite interesting and uh you know they they seem to be doing good things and what i like about the guys is they brought a bit of humor to it they're having a bit of fun and they are getting people interested in sticks again and there is something you know having a stick holding a stick walking with a stick um it used to be a way of life for people people and sticks were like that there's a certain energy from stick there's an energy from you there's a vibration to nature there's <clears throat> there's any one of you guys who hold a stick, feel it connected as well, uh, you know there's something different. It's not like when you hold a piece of plastic and you're walking around, there's no energy, there's no soul to it, there's no, there's nothing in it as well. But like when you hold um, a handmade piece of wood and if it's grown out of Irish soil and you have that Irish connection, you touch that, you, you, you get a sense of all your ancestors and stuff. Look, I know you guys understand because like you're the guys that have, have told me all of this as well. And I do understand it. Um, sticks and stories is a question on Instagram. Do you use some sort of varnish? My hazel walking stick sometimes gets ruined uh, if it gets left outside for too long. Um, I use um, different finishes depending on what I want to achieve. Sometimes satin, sometimes gloss. Um, it's very important to, to, you do have to mix a little bit of varnish whatever finish you use because you need that hardness. Um, if you've left the hazel outside and it's got ruined for too long, it would only get ruined maybe if it's in the sunlight, you know, because the sun is powerful, man. No matter what finishes you have on, you leave it long enough and the sun's going to cause issues. Uh, but like most finishes should be a bit all weather. They should like be able to to put up with a bit of rain and uh, and different things too long. So, you know, it just depends where you got the stick and what the finish was as uh, as well. But uh, usually I try to, uh, to make the sticks... Uh, you know my finishes um you know that they're they're going to to be durable my finishes are always with the mindset that it's it's a walking aid and it's going to have a bit of friction on the top i don't put big thick layers of glass varnish and polish it and make it look shiny and nice and um, because then essentially you're just loads of friction against the varnish and after a while it becomes a little bit it just feels a bit off like um you want as light as finish as possible on it you don't want thick finishes on the uh, the handle too much uh let me see now my messages um over on uh, sorry on youtube forge le femme says hello everyone look at all the sticks oh yes i said that uh let's see now my cory news says uh are you a fifth generation walking stick maker yes i am 
I have interviewed uh, my father on the stream. Uh, he watches the stream too. Um, so he would be the, the fourth generation as well. Uh, my grandfather was a stick maker as well. Uh, he would be, you know, the, the third generation. Uh, my my grand uncle featured in uh, in the, the in a very famous traditional book in the 1980s. I have made a YouTube video and I've shown all the credentials of that as well. So I have, um, uh, unlike a lot of a lot of other guys out there who claim to be fifth generation stick maker, um, I have the proof and the receipts that I am a direct fifth generation walking stick maker. I have shown that on my channel many times as well. Um, also, I have, uh, you know, uh, a direct connection to uh, the Foley faction fighter legend from from Kerry. So I have a direct connection, which I have proved as well to the uh, the faction fighter, which my mom was a Foley from uh, Calorglan and uh, the Foley from Calorglan was very famous faction fighter, um, which my mom would be a relative of. Uh, let's see now. I think there's a question on Instagram that I miss where it is. Uh, Crush Arm says, how long does it take to season a stick? Um, it takes two to three years. Um, when you cut the stick, um, cut it a little bit long. There might be a little bit of cracking. Sometimes the cracking you can work into the design. If it cracks along the shaft of the stick, throw it away. If it cracks a little bit in the top, you can work into the design once it's not going any further. But uh, yeah, a good two to three years as well. Uh, let's see. My dad um, had his walking stick stolen at a gas station. That's terrible, man. Like, you know, why would you steal no man's walking stick? That's kind of low. Uh, my dad had a root stick from Ireland. It belonged to my grandfather, of course, and my dad passed away in 2015. Um, my condolences on the, the passing, of course, of your family member and uh, the person that stole another man's walking stick. You know, they're going to hell. You know, you do not. There's certain things. There's certain things in life that is an unwritten rule that are unforgivable in nature. You know, for one, you don't get it. You don't key another man's car. You don't you don't mess with another man's car. And right up there beside that. And I would think it's, it's almost of equal importance is you do not mess with a man's walking stick. You do not steal a man's walking stick. So to those guys who stole your grandfather's walking stick, uh, I will put an Irish curse on them. An Irish gypsy curse, Woo! you know, using my, my magic. <coughs> if you believe in that as well. So I, I put I put a curse on whoever stole your granddad's stick there. Um, you know, so hopefully they'll they'll get some justice. Uh, Brian McGraw says, uh, amazing collection of black thorn behind you. Yeah, that's just a little bit as well. There's there's more like in this side. I have more over on that side. Wait. You see more in the background there as well. You see more over here. So yeah, there's there's quite quite a lot here, isn't there? Like there's way over there too. It's all around me here. Section over here. So yeah, there's uh there's definitely a few few sticks few sticks I have we had there as well. Uh, let's see now. I'm gonna catch up in a few messages here. Um. Bill uh, Taphorn says, what factors are involved in your decision to paint or not paint a stick? Um, usually the bark like, say, for example, like um, I, I did the stick that I did before this, the journey of a walking stick. At the start, if you watch the videos, I kept talking about it was going to be a natural bark stick and I was going to um, I was going to do like the uh, the natural bark of it and finish it like that. But then when I was looking at it and the bark just didn't look interesting and then there was you know, sometimes like for me, I like to paint it black if it's got loads of bumps and knuckles because they stand out a bit more like you can notice it better from the distance. Um, if if it's like from the trunk of the tree and a bit flat like this, um, I might sand it down. And if it looks if the bar looks pretty cool, I will just use a finish on that as well. So usually it's a cosmetic and a stylistic thing that how I decide whether I paint it black or leave a kind of natural bark. I hope that helps. Uh, <laughs> see, Crush Aaron says, um, did you use... Sorry, did you used to make sticks for the army? Uh, I haven't, no, I've never professionally made sticks specifically for the army, but I have made sticks for people who have been in the army and for military guys. A lot of military 
Um, guys love the swagger sticks, which I make on my site, if you go to McCaffreyCrafts.com, you can check that out. Um, so I have like sold a lot of sticks to military guys. I've sold sticks to um, American soldiers. I've sold sticks to the uh, guys in the British military. I've sold sticks to, to military over in Australia. But usually there's individuals who have been, you know, army service as well. So, yeah, I do. I do sell a lot of sticks to people um, who have army backgrounds as well of all sorts. Um, Brian McGraw says, have you, uh, you have taught me so much, Francis. My families are Sweeney's. Sweeney's, a lot of Sweeney's around Glenbe in Kerry. Um, from Donegal and family history shows where the faction fighters uh, at the fairs. Yes, the faction fighters were pretty much in most counties of Ireland. They started in Munster. Um, they never really had any faction fighting or that kind of fighting in uh, Antrim. Like, um, you know, sometimes a lot of people associate, oh, there's, there's faction fightings. Um, there might have been fighting that went on there and rioting to do with tenancies and land rule and home rule and things like that. But a faction fight is completely different than, you know, riots and different things like that as well. Uh, <laughs> let's see now, a few more Instagram questions here. Let me catch up on. Uh, I can smell the chips already, Francis. Yes. Um, I usually get some takeaway on a Friday after this. I'm, I'm so predictable, man. I'm I'm a man of routine. Like I like processes and routines uh, to, to do. So thank you for that, Anthony. Uh, Ron Hessen says, uh, do you have a favorite stick that you couldn't uh, part with as well? Um, probably like the first stick that I made, which was crap and it's so bad. And like I have it in my bedroom and uh, I like looking at it to see how terrible it was. And it's a reminder, like most people think your favorite stick is like some stick that is amazing that no one wants uh, or that, that you would never sell and stuff like. But this stick is so bad. It, <laughs> no one would buy it. It's just like. It's ugly. It's bad finish on it. It cracked. And uh, for me, I'd never sell that stick. I'd, I would probably be buried with it because uh, it's terrible. And uh, I like that. I like sometimes like when you go on a journey, you know, whether you're a crafts person or a business person or something, you like to remember where it started. You like just to look back. And the reason you do this is to see how much you've accomplished. You know, some days you'll be lacking motivation, you'll be this, you'll be that. But then you kind of look, say, look, I, I went from here to here and now I'm here. You know, imagine 10 more years looking back at where I'm at now and, and different things. So, uh, yeah, that's, I suppose, not a, my favorite stick, but a stick I couldn't par part with as well. Uh, you know, you, you, you can't fall in love with these sticks too much. Like, you have to make them and, and get them out. Um, I believe, I do genuinely believe that all of these sticks have their own owner and that I'm just facilitating it. Like this stick has already been predetermined for someone. <clears throat> that guy will be connected like by a magnet to the stick and will find it. Um, when guys have a connection to a stick, it's like a magnetic pull. They want it. They, they're, they just, you know, there, there's this an intense like attraction when guys like find the stick that they want. Um, so I'm over on YouTube now. Uh, Tim says, hello, Francis. Talking about other woods, remind me to check for Rowan uh, wood sticks, but none there yet. Yeah, I, I, I've, I have none in the works, not for next next year, probably. Are you anticipating some Rowan anytime future? Nope. Uh, I, I'm still a year behind in Rowan, uh, so I don't have any for, for this year. Um, holly and Ash I'll definitely have by Christmas. Uh, I have a whole lot of Holly on the way as well. Uh, let me see now where I'm at with the comments. Paddy P. Let's give me a, a nice signal there. Thank you very much. So over on Facebook, Tim Hope says, is there anything one needs to do to keep a walking stick looking good year after year? Um, my philosophy is to, to it should look worse every year and every year. And by that, I mean, you're going to use it. You're going to scuff it. It's like buying a new pair of shoes and wanting to keep perfect year after year and year. It's not going to happen. Like if you're using a stick, it's going to get scuffed. You're going to drop it. You're going to pick it up. It's going to get a little dense and different things. But like, if you want to touch it up every few years, um, usually like what I recommend to people is that um, just use a water-based gloss finish. They're easy to work with. They're usually not as toxic as some of the other finishes out there. You don't want a cellulose-based one. It'll blow your mind. Um, some of the fumes that come off a lot of the finishes are very, very strong and dangerous and different things. So usually I don't want, I don't want you guys in the community to be working with finishes. Um, you have to you have to know a lot, a lot about wood finishes and there is safety aspects with your health with the fumes and some of them will spontaneously combust like if you're using a certain oils and you use a you know a, a, a little clot of clot to put it on and you curl up that pot, clot and put it down there the little sparks will start and eventually it'll go on fire 
Uh, you know, so you don't want to burn down. You don't want to burn down the house when you're dealing with. Oh, my leg is a bit sore. Let me move. So you don't want to burn down the house um, with some of the finishes. So uh, yeah, my advice to you, Tim, is um, just you know, don't worry about keeping it looking good and perfect year after year. Use it. Create memories with it. Um, be known as having such a connection to stick. And what you'll find is it is part of your legacy. Like when you when you depart. And I depart this good world that we're on and family members, they want to have some connection to us. So imagine like you have a walking stick and every day your hand is touching it, your hand is touching it. You know, all of your energy is going into it as well. And a family member then when they're left the stick, they will feel when they need a connection to you, when they're feeling sad, they can go to the stick and go, you know, dad, I'm thinking of you, dad. You know, they, it's like a direct line to, to to do something as well. Um, and I love that. Like, there's so much I love about the sticks. Um, and I never want to go on too much about the dead, you know, dead and dead side of things and stuff like that. But like, a, a, truth be told, like a lot of guys in this community have passed away. Um, over the five to ten years, I've been good friends. I've had many stick guys who bought like sixty, seventy, eighty sticks, and you know, it's kind of good then when their family members reach out and say, "Look at you know." They'll say like Alex has passed or John has passed or something like that. And he really liked his stick and different things. And they'll show me pictures of them. So the thing is like, you know, use the stick, create memories of the stick. Um, and then, you know, you know that this stick is going to be loved and cherished by family member. But the main thing is that when a family member is like feeling a bit sad, like literally this stick has a connection to you and it can go to the stick to cheer them up. So like, you know, get get no like if you're in your later years and stuff have a stick um have something as well and you know give you know leave a few of these sticks to family members they will love them um you know you'll always get that one person that will that actually here's a story for you guys as well and uh, sorry john saying good evening that's fine as well and mary says uh, do you ship to usa yes i do i use ups or dhl it takes three to five days once the courier collects it and uh, i'm quite happy to ship to the usa i do it all, all the time it costs about 39 dollars, i think with the exchange rate so if you buy three or four sticks bang 39 dollars. i i absorb the cost and um, it actually costs a bit more than that but um you don't want to go too high at the shipping cost so remember i'm in ireland and it's going halfway around the world in four or five days I have faster to shipping than you could get it from New York to, to say, Florida. Um, so one thing you'll see about on my Facebook profile, everything is how quick that I ship it. Um, see, uh, Brian says, take care, Francis. Respect to you and your, your family as well. So uh, so happy for that. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, I saw the Hanging Gale movie for the first time recently, and it takes place in Donegal in 1846-47 during the famine. Uh, was there a, a stick fighting scene in it? Um, I haven't seen this movie. Um, I'll have a check it out. What's called The Hanging Gale. Wait, let me type it in here so I'll remember it. Hanging uh, Gale. -E. Oh, is it a TV series or is it a movie? Let's see. So it's The Hanging Gale TV series or Hanging Gale movie? Let's check movie. Uh, set in Donegal during the Great Famine. Oh, this is an old thing. I've seen, I've seen like memes and pictures of this been sent to me. Um, there is, yeah, there is a shillelagh. There are some sticks in, in this thing because uh, they have been sent out to me. But uh, I, is it good to watch? It looked a bit boring, <laughs> you know. It looked a bit boring, but I suppose I should should watch it as well. But if it's good and you said it's good, I'll check it out, man. Don't worry about that. And uh, let me just keep up. Uh, so Instagram now. Um, Anthony says, "I love the sixty and rouge stick from you." Waiting, I want to go up on your site. Um, when I do do that, it's rare. And when it's rare, all the stick collector guys will be lining up. And uh, there's guys <coughs> like there's guys that follow me in my community and they know the sticks I make. So when I make something special or different or something like that, they all line up and they all want to do it. So and I, I don't you know, I don't play favors with anyone. It's a first come, first burst, uh, first come, first served basis. And I just put it online <coughs> as well. Uh, OK, over on YouTube. Uh, does that root wood have different characteristics compared to regular black thorn, denser, tougher? Um, supposedly so. Um, the root stick um, does, um, I, I haven't really tested this out, but it is assumed and it's like it's it's said that the, the root is tougher and stronger because it's been in the ground and, and different things. Uh, 
for me, the root stick is just a stylistic thing. It looks way different, and there's so many natural designs and, and different things as well compared to the regular black drone. Regular black drone is fine too. You have the root stick, the knob stick. So a lot of people get knob sticks confused with root sticks or root balls, they call them. Like this is this would be called like a root ball stick. It's made from the root. The root goes off in all different directions. This is what a real root stick looks like. When you see a ball at the top, um, it's not a root ball. It, it's you, you hear the word ball, and you think it is. It's just a knob stick. So there's a kind of a difference between it. But both are cool sticks. Like, uh, you know, you're not going to go wrong with owning any of them as well. Uh, love what? Love that connection on who used it. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, like, you know, when <clears throat> if you have a family member that ever passes, and you get to own something that they cherish, something that they used, like. When you're having a bad day and you miss that person, you're feeling sad about a dad or a grandfather or, or someone that was really important in your life and you open up the drawer and, you know, like I'll give you an example, like what I have of my dad. <clears throat> I think my dad knows this already. Um, when my dad was 15 or 16 working in Belfast in the, uh, was it the 60s or 70s, some sometime like that, um, the very first project he did for woodwork when he was like 15 is he had to make this boat. It was this handmade little little boat that he made out of wood and he painted it and everything like that. And uh, I keep that in the drawer beside my bed. And it's something that my dad had. He cherished for years, very important to him. And uh, I, I have that now. And for me, that's my connection to my dad. So, like, you know, he's still with us for another few years and still in good health. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm realistic too. Look, some days not going to be here. I'm going to miss the guy and be like, Dad, you know, I'm not feeling good today. I'll take out that, say a few words to it. You know, I know that his hands went into it. I know the story behind it. And uh, that's the thing about these walking sticks too, man. It's like, you know, when you when you factor in that into the stick, it's priceless. You know, like if somebody offered me, you know, 10,000, 20,000 for that that boat that my, my dad made for his first woodwork project when he was a carpenter back in the like 60s or 70s, I'm not selling that for nothing over my dead body. I wouldn't sell it for absolutely nothing at all. Um, Let's see now. Um, Pastor Doug says, uh, my hopes are to stop by the shop and pick out my own. Uh, is there a problem carrying them on the plane home? And um, if you buy a walking stick, which is the longer ones, as a walking aid, um, rules and regulations in the air industry is that you are allowed a walking aid to get to the seat and get off the plane. So to answer your question, Pastor Doug, yes, you are allowed a walking stick. Now, the shorter 19 inch shillelaghs, which are the short ones, the little short sticks, you have to pack that in your checked bag. So you pack it into your checked luggage, which you check in, no problem, but you cannot carry it on your hand luggage. Okay. So, but you can walk to your seat with a walking aid. And you're in Ireland, these are classed as walking aids. That is officially what they are. And um, the tariff code in which they're shipped with customs, it, they are walking aids. That is exactly how they are. And they're walking sticks. Um, let's see. Did the guy from Mal Oh yeah, he did. He did. He was sound. He didn't know about he didn't know about you. He said he said, Oh, is is John is John all right? And I actually said you're an okay guy. So I said that um I said uh he said he knew a few Johns, but they were small guys, and he knew an another Elliot as well. Uh so if he gets in touch with you, his name is Jeff Jeffrey, he watches the live stream as well. Um sound guy. Um I met him and uh, he's been watching my live stream for some time. Uh he's it, like he's such Jeff had such enthusiasm when he came to my shop, and that is something that that I really, really like. I think that's like amazing as well. Uh, you know, when when I meet guys that come to my shop and they're like, wow, he was like, oh, you know, I loved it, man. It was great. It was like he genuinely loved sticks. He loved the process. No matter how the stick looked, he was like, you know, and he stayed. He stayed for a good bit. Like we had a long chat and uh, he was uh, he was good. But uh, yeah, like shout out to Jeff or Jeffrey. Um, it's very nice to meet you. And uh, yeah, I loved I love his energy, man. There's some guys, there's no, another guy who came to see me in the shop before, Mark Winters. Uh, I think uh, I think he he comes on here now and again. And uh, that dude, like the, it was so what the first time Mark Winters came to my shop and um, he just came in and he walked up to me and he gave me this hug. But like he didn't let go. He held it and he held it for like way longer. That was comfortable for a man to be hugging and stuff. And it was just like, you know, and he's like, you know, thank you for for this, and it's amazing. And it was done. It was like it was nice. It was such uh, such an interesting kind of thing as well. But uh, let's see, uh, let's see. Uh, C uh, McGinn says, "Greetings. Can you carve my name in a stick?" Um, I usually stay away from carvings because, like, I'll give like a final product and stuff, and then 
when you're etching and carving and different things like you know sometimes if you kind of make a little mistake you can kind of have to remove the bark and different things and you know you have to make sure you spell it correct and my handwriting isn't as fancy or nice like usually when people want to carve a name on a stick so i kind of stay away from that it's not my style and um, sometimes i do take think that carving names and different things can can take away from the stick like if you want to just like scratch in your own and like my philosophy is that if you want to carve a name on the stick i think you should do it man you you get a little get a nail get a little knife and just put your initials like you know what would you be you would be uh c uh cmg you just put like c you know just do a little c and m and a g and just just have it on it and then like you know when you're gone and your loved ones can see your name there they can kind of like give it a little i what, what usually people do is like they give a rub like that when they have people's names on it but uh yeah it's not some i stay away from all the carving and stuff my style is rustic sticks i make the sticks i want them and uh, i kind of stay away from all the kind of carving and, and different things as well uh, i just kind of like the way that i make them and it's kind of the way that uh, everyone has their own style some guys do the all that stuff but it's not really how I, what i operate <laughs> yeah that's how i feel uh grandpa stick is my treasure it is like everyone everyone wants like but here's the problem like and uh when when everyone wants to stick say you have three three kids and granddad passes and he's got his one stick like literally you'll have brothers and a sister fighting over that one stick so uh if you're a granddad <laughs> make sure you have two or three sticks of mccaffrey crafts and uh because you know make sure there's one to give everyone as well and you know you have your everyday stick you'll have your stick for going out walking you have your show-off stick and um, there's actually an, a multitude of reasons that people have sticks and they like to rotate them they like to, to you know they, they said today i'm feeling like this stick just like a pair of shoes or something like that they just want to like you know bring their stick out for a walk i, I actually love the connection people have with sticks it's amazing I sh there's so much more I can actually talk about that. I should do way more videos on that side of things too. So I'm thinking out loud. And uh, let's see. Um, Mand, uh, let's see. Uh, Manderson9 says, I came across your channel a few years ago um, and I've been collecting sticks since. Thank you very much. Um, I've never seen your comments before, my man. So get don't be shy. Like join the streams, comment on videos as well. Um, let's see. Really enjoyed making them. Trying to get my son into the fun with me now. Thanks for the passion and sharing. Um, yeah, it's here's the thing about getting sons involved with stick making and stuff they don't really care until they reach a certain age and like um my son like when i was injured and it, you know i had to do my my health thing which was pain in the butt and uh my son started to show an interest in stick making like my dad was a carpenter by trade and working wood you know i was into my i was in my 20s before i started to show interest in in doing the walking stick business and and making it as well um i didn't really have an interest in that before it was just most young men and teenagers is just chasing girls and having fun and drinking with the lads and you know trying to smoke the cigar and you know have your ferrari and look cool you know i think that's every watch james bond's movie and you know think think you're cool um so if you can get your son involved with stick making and sticks and different things like here's the thing every single one of you guys here think back just just go back in time just imagine go back in time to when you were a kid and genuinely speaking like how many of you guys were at the beach walking around and you just picked up a stick and you're like yeah you know wow i have my sword now wow, you know so many so many young guys when they're kids they'll pick up that stick and stuff and <clears throat> When if you have a son someday and he he picks up the dull, dirtiest, filthiest stick there is, and he's so happy and he's like, yeah, I've got my stick, it's cool. Like kids will see something in a piece of wood lying on the floor. It might be filthy. <laughs> there might be woodworms coming out of it. And you know, usually the the moms are like, get that filthy thing out of my house. And the dads be just smiling at their sons, going, good job, a man, because they can kind of relate to it. Um, but I, I see it now and again. Actually, I was walk, I was walking, I was walking home two nights ago, and uh, I saw a kid, Alex, from from this from the the housing area that I'm in, and he had a stick, and he's walking around, and he's like, wow, and he's doing, and he's doing like that, and uh, I kind of was thinking of like, you know, that's that's what it is to be a kid, you know, like no internet, no nothing, you just pick up a stick and you feel. You know, you want to fight, you're fighting some imaginary dragon or dinosaur or something like that, and you've got your stick and, and, and different things. So, like, 
I think that with young people, uh, with sticks, is that if they show an interest in any age, just leave them pick it up. You know, a bit of dirt in the hand is not going to kill everyone, you know, and different things like that. And I think it's funny, like, if the mom or someone or the grandmother in the house is, keep that filthy stick out of my house, <coughs> use a dad to, like, whisper to the son, so come on, you know, bring him down to the shed, get a wire brush out, kind of clean, you know, clean some of the, the grit off the stick, you know, get the son to, like, you know, set a bit of sanding, be careful of the dust, you know, just do a little bit to give him an interest, get some, like, um, maybe some oil finish if it's, like, a, a you want to really bring out the grain, you know, put in the oil finish, tell the son, yeah, I will go back and check this tomorrow. <laughs> and like, you know, if you give your son that type of experience, for one, it's a fantastic memory, my man. It's like, they're going to be like, yeah, dad's cool, you know? And like, there always is like, you know, when when a son gets dad in his side against mom, you know, you feel good like as a kid, you know, mom said, didn't do this, but dad under quiet was like, yeah, son, good job. Good job, my man. <laughs> and uh, I think that's kind of good, like, uh, for, you know, with, with relationship buildings and stuff, like, you know, um, it's very different between what a father offers a son and what a mom offers a son. A mom has that nurturing, has caring, talking about the guy's feelings, if you're having a bad day. The dad is more, you know, a bit stoic, but direct. And, uh, you know, the best way to ever connect with a dad is is something like that, where you kind of make something together. You have a bit of, you know... Like me and my dad argue all the time about the most nonsensical things, but like it's great memories to have. Like, you know, I, I've been very lucky that I've got to spend so much time with my dad over the last few years. Like he's 70, what do you know, man, 75. And he's still coming down here in the mornings. He's still, you know, doing the stick. We had we had some tourists in today into the uh, shop. Uh, we had uh, my man from, uh, from I, uh, Iowa, uh where's he from again tulsa where's tulsa oklahoma <clears throat> he's from tulsa and uh, he came in and my dad was talking telling the stories and then we had um very uh, young uh young people in from uh from the uk a lady from wales and uh where was your man from again i can't remember and they're they're driving around this little kind of van thing around ireland they finished college the two of them are very highly educated very smart individuals like uh, one he was uh he is a very um, extensive knowledge of the agricultural business from from an engineering and business sense and his uh his girlfriend or why well, i think they're probably just girlfriend um because they were quite young they're probably just finished college by a year or two and uh, it was cool that they wanted to come to ireland it was cool that they were interested in sticks and like she's got such a cool job like she was telling me about it and my dad was talking to them as well and it was it was great and uh you know they, oh one second all these little flies are flying over here now that's going to be an issue anyway so I got distracted by the flies. Um, but yeah, she she works with like uh, rockets and spaceships and uh, semiconductors that are made in space and brought down. I was like, I wanted to, I wanted to like talk to her for an hour and stuff, but like uh, you know, we we kept them there for ages talking. So that was kind of pretty cool. So anyway, me and my dad we like meeting interesting people in the shop because we work all day. And um, my dad said he was in Belfast in uh, 1965. So that's when he made the little boat that I was talking about. So that was like quite good as well. And let's see, Dennis Olson says, uh, love your sticks. I have two. Thank you very much, Dennis. Over on Facebook, I do appreciate that as well. Uh, let's see, and Dad's saying there, uh, Millifield Tech. That was where he made his uh, apprentice to be it as well. Liesel, how are you, Liesel? Hi, folks. I'm so sorry you're late. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, I, I seen that character you've done with the uh, the hair and the, the, you know, the cigar box as well. And uh, are you playing gigs or something? I, I must check out your channel. Like, I've, I don't check out anyone's channel really too much because, like, uh, I just kind of post and go because I'm always so busy and be busy with the guitars. Remember us here in McCaffrey Crafts. You know, you've been here years ago when when you get famous as well. Always, always remember, remember the people that uh, that made you famous as well. Wait, where am I now for the comments? I'm a bit behind. Let me catch up. And I'm, uh, Mary says hello. Frank says hello as well. Mary and Frank are all saying hello, hello to each other. Hi, Mary. Uh, hi, Francis. I missed you. Very good. Trees in general are amazing. They are. They are, man. I'm not a bit. Of, I'm not a tree hugger, but like, you know, I like working with wood. I just, it's cool. You just, when you walk into a house, man, you want wood. You want to see wooden tables, the wood grain. I hate. I hate places look too modern and fancy, man. It's like, <clears throat> give me that wood. That's what I want. Uh, Paddy's like a yes, Brian. Uh, Brian is. Like, I agree. When I try to teach my son about trees and sticks, he just says, uh, "I know that," but he can tell every tree name uh, by looking at the tree. Uh, but that's kind of cool that he can tell the, the, the ticks. Like, 
what, what it is with young kids and sons and different things like that is like if you're telling them or lecturing them, they're not interested. But if they show an interest in something and you just join in in their excitement, I think that's kind of like a better way to do it. But yeah, like, you know, kids are always at the dad, you think, you know, dad, stop. Oh, no cringe. Oh, dad, you and your sticks again. Oh, the smell of dust and stuff. But uh, that's all good. Uh, yes, my uncle was a carpenter as a kid. Uh, we made a toy boat now. I'm an adult. I use my skills. And my uncle Reginald uh, taught me as well. And what a fantastic memory, Lisa. Like, you have this memory of, you know, the strong male character in your family history, an uncle, and you just remember he's making toy, toy boats as well. And, like, you know, why was he doing that? He He wanted to give something to you guys. You know, he was, you know, in his free time, he was like, yeah, let's make these toys for the kids out of, ha out of woods and stuff. So that's a pretty cool story. Uh, Paddy P, uh, all right, very good. Uh, John says that one of my boys has shown an interest, but I don't like to push him. It's great he's doing one with me. Yeah, like my advice to you, John, from my experience um, is that you have to leave them hurt themselves a bit, you know, in life. Like when they pick up a saw and start to do a bit of stick making, like, you can't be over them. Don't hold it that way. You're going to hurt yourself. Don't do this. Don't do that. Oh, don't. And my dad's like that. <laughs> my dad's like that. Maybe that's why he put me off at the start. <clears throat> my dad's like kind of like that. You're holding the stick the wrong way. Sometimes you got to leave them hold it the wrong way and they might nick their finger or something. And, you know, I'm sure your wife will, will be pretty annoyed with you. Like, you know, that you hurt her precious little boy. Um, but John, you know, he's, he's going to be a man someday and, you know, getting little nuts and cuts. And like um, you know, some like I, I get my son before, and he's doing a call, saw, and he's oh, he's holding it so badly, and like I was, you know, I was trying not to discourage him. He's like, you know, he's all proud, he's cutting it, and he starts cutting too fast, and it slips over, and it gives him a nick, and oh, you know, and he's like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I, I, it doesn't hurt, it's fine, you know, you <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, John, with son, like when a son does something wrong and they hurt themselves, they're no pain, they don't feel pain because <clears throat> they think they're in trouble and they don't want to show it, like, but like. You know, and we go, all right, let's get the plaster out, get the pseudo cream, let's bandage that up as well. <coughs> but like, the thing is, look, my son's interested in money because I'm nonstop talking about that in business and stuff. And uh, he understands the business side of things. And that was his level of interest first. He was like, he understood the business dynamic. He understood the brand. And uh, he's into legacy building. Like my son, you see, for me, John, for me, John, McCaffrey Crafts is a, is a legacy business. Like, I want this to be a brand. I kind of want it to continue. Um, I want it to kind of like, you know, to go as long as it goes. And hopefully, hopefully it'll go for some time. Uh, hi, Paul. Uh, do you ever make sticks from you? I actually have. <coughs> you three a few times. That's wonderful. I thought I was Irish. Turns out I'm 33% Scottish. Uh, so oh, sure. Drink a few Guinness and you're Irish. Don't worry. Everyone's Irish on St. Patrick's Day. Thanks, Francis. Let me catch up with the comments because i got to go now in a minute. Um, my answer are Claymore prone. Okay. One more question um, for you. Have you ever done a bogwood stick? Uh, the bogwood is more like culture, like um, sculptures. Like, I haven't got like a long, thin piece that I can make like a walking stick. Like, any of the any of the bogwoods that I find, it's usually like, you know, the, the, the stumps or the roots of the stick and they're always like weird like designs. There's there's, there's probably a few over there and stuff as well, and I can't really, I don't really have any to, to hand now as well. Oh, wait, I actually, I see one. Just give me a second. I can show you So what Bob what, what looks like. One second. One not far away from me. <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, it's a bit, you know, you get a piece of, oh, it's really dusty. But like, you know, they, they look like this. They make nice sculptures. Like, it's hard to make a walking stick out of something like that. There's a bit of bogwood. I have. It's very dusty. It needs to be cleaned. What's that? Turn that over there. A bit of dust. <coughs> but that, that's kind of like what a bit of bogwood looks like. Uh, I work mostly with steel. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, love your stick making. Become a hobby. Actually, yeah. Um, must must uh, check out and give a shout out. If you want to do an interview sometime, Forge Lefem, we can do like an interview where you talk about what you're interested in and working with steel and. Uh, and different things like that. I must start getting the interviews going again. I actually enjoyed doing them. Uh, and I did an interview with Liesl as well. If you guys go to my playlist with interviews, I did an interview with Liesl as well. Uh, yes, uh, set me up for life. Very good. <clears throat> yeah, because I remember, like, you for years, man, were like, 
I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then I was just like, do it. You were like way more skillful than me. Like you're, you know, you're an artist. Like I'm just a rustic stick maker. Uh, hello, Taryn. He asks every week, Mary, first thing I come through the door is like, did Mary, and then sometimes I have to scroll through the comments to show him because he doesn't believe me. Um, do you make knives? Uh, okay, you should answer that. Liesl, let's see. Son's done from their father. Let me try to catch up these comments now because so I'm going to use it a bit fast. Uh, Kentucky Bourbon says, I live in an old house and the previous owner uh, planted a lone hawthorn on the west side of the house. I have a straight piece of deadwood from this tree, seasoning with longers, uh, the fairies though. Yeah. Um, just make sure like if it's a bit of deadwood and stuff that like usually I like to cut it when it's a bit alive and green and stuff and it seasons a bit better. Sometimes if it's deadwood or been on the ground for a while, it can start to rot a bit in the seasoning process. Uh, let's see. I owe you Francis a big smile. No worries, no worries. I, I do appreciate that. And, uh, you know, um, it, it means a lot to me, Liesl, that I've motivated you to do something. Like, you know, you joined my community, you saw me hustling and, and making things as well. And you found your calling in life, Liesl. Like, you know, you had this skill, you had this passion. And uh, it's been great to watch your journey too, uh, Liesl, about how, you know, you have your own community now. You're interacting with them. It's it's great when you have your community and people who appreciate your art, and uh, it's it's always quite a nice thing as well. Crew Mano, the four man king, man, I saw your video with the storms in Dubai. That was insane. Like, uh, you know, there was a lot of rain and tornadoes and the wind and stuff. That that's mad. I hope you're okay with your family as well, and uh, I hope your daughter's been very successful. Uh, yes, yeah, you wanted me on the uh, on to do the podcast, and I said yes. I'm I'm totally down for doing that. So. Whenever she wants to to do that, if she can reach out uh, to me as well with any date, I'm fine. Uh, Stephen, good day from Australia. How are my man? And we're all your speeches. Ah, sure, don't worry about that. You'll be fine. You deserve it. Like you deserve some praise. Like you know, well done. Like seriously, well done, Liesel. Like you did it. You just you were so like. Let's just analyze this just for a second before I go with Liesel's story. <clears throat> Liesel is a very talented person she has this hobby about cigar box and making guitars and playing music and it's her passion and like you know she had all of these things which visually are good which you can make like you know a lot of good content around and it was just the fear that was holding you back Liesl you were just the fear that no one will want it the fear that no one will like it the fear that and like sometimes in life you cannot listen to those voices you know, if you have certain skill or hobby or interest, just put it online. Just what you're passionate about. You will be surprised. You will find your community. There is a community for everything. If you were a guy who loves playing the spoons and you're playing the spoons and play a bit of music with the spoons, um, you'll find a group of people and stuff. And like once you get over that, that fear and you were just like, ah, I don't know. And I was like, go on. Will you set up your YouTube channel? Just do it. Just do it. And like, um, do your short videos, get on TikTok, do all of these different things, Liesl. Liesl, next thing you should do is get over to TikTok. Um, your type of content and what you're doing would go do so good on the short format and uh, especially on TikTok, you know, which was like the music and, and different things as well. Uh, good day. Uh, let's see now. Uh, we're fine. Thank you. And she'll contact you as soon as possible. Ah, you know, in a day or two, like, you know, or, or, or this weekend. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's no there's no major major panic as well on that as well. And uh, yeah, you have a nice family. And uh, I've seen the the picture of you, which uh, was it from twenty years ago, with your dad or with your granddad on the motorbike as well. And uh, I, I kind of love seeing that. I love people posting, you know, their stories, their journeys, <clears throat> what they're going through. You know, I kind of like like that. So uh, check out um, Crew Manau Forearm King on Instagram. <laughs> a cool guy who I I like and I respect. Um, I like I like his hustle. I like uh, his energy. It's, it's pretty good. And we're all uh, Liesl, sorry, friend. 175 now. Enough said. Uh, TikTok, okay. 175. It doesn't matter if you have two subs, 10 subs, 20 subs. There's 175 people, you know, that want to know what you're doing. They're so proud of your community. They want to interact with you. They comment on your videos as well. It doesn't matter how many subs you got if you're doing it and it's your passion. And like, you know, you've got sales from it. You've got ideas. You've got inspirations like <clears throat> small groups like get together. And it's, it's a niche thing, cigar box, you know, and, and more and more people will get into it as well. 
and uh, people are usually attracted to kind of crafts that make a bit of money and stuff but follow your passions and uh, there'll be other things as well uh very good uh let's see i remain spec okay guys i gotta go i think i'm past my time um as always it's been a pleasure to talk to you guys in the community um i hope you enjoyed these live streams that i do i hope you enjoy my short content i hope you enjoy the video series i commissioned with molly um i'm i'm trying to give you guys as much value as possible in this community and uh you know thank you so much for everything you've done for me um thank you so much for buying my sticks um without you guys in this community this the stick community that i built um i wouldn't have a living uh, my family wouldn't have the life that I've given them. Um, I wouldn't be able to buy takeaway tonight food and bring it to uh, to my hungry kids. So I, I genuinely adore you guys and you guys are my life force. And uh, as always, thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye.